episode 82 in our last night of Theoretical Rejects, once again with the walrus and the troll. <laughs> wow, 82. Yeah, I'm, I'm cruising to 100. I think at 100 I might start a different brand of podcast. Maybe more like specialized. But, <laughs> Why? Huh? Why? I think 100 is enough. You think so? 100 is enough of Theoretical Rejects, the podcast. I mean, I still do podcasts, but they'll be like, have like a theme. <coughs> Establish ahead of time as opposed to like a theme we wrap it up after. <laughs> Figure out the theme after we've wandered around for a while. Yeah, where do we end up? <laughs> Which I like, don't get me wrong, I like it as a thing, but I think right. that we I was only need to. Hun- isn't that sort of your thing? You just like spontaneous randomness? I do <laughs> like that, but I also have 15 viewers on average. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I gotta approach something with like, what's an angle where people were like, oh, Oh, he's talking about Photon all the time. And all the Photon fans will come in and, like, watch. So your fours and listeners will go down to threes? No, like tens, man. <laughs> tens and tens. I have a very specific subject podcast, and it has three fans, so... <laughs> well, yes, but, but, but yours is a 1950s radio show. Yeah. I'm going to be like... I'm going to find something that's, like, slightly less niche. <laughs> there, you, you, I'm gonna, like, I'm not gonna, by much, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about wrestling. Wrestling and, like, cartoons. I don't know. Anyway, that, that's... So... Do you guys remember Moulin Rouge, that shithouse movie? Right, the Boz Lerman, part of the Boz Lerman Velvet Trilogy. Yeah, we're like one of the, um, wait, the Velvet Trilogy? Yeah. What's, what's the other books? What's the other ones? Uh, Strictly Ballroom and um, uh, I think Romeo and Juliet's the other one. And how are they linked? Like, it's why Velvet? Because it's all Boz Lerman, Boz Lerman all over the fucking subject. Okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, they're, they're all his, yeah, they're all his movies. But, like, so like, well, one person at NPR said, it's the kind of musical where you come out humming the production values. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was just like the best description ever. And and I went to see it and my knee was acting up. This is before like, my back surgery. This is just like uh, when I had I did jujitsu and my knees would act up because because they didn't like being knee barred as knees do. Right. And um, so I'm watching it in Santa Monica and about one third of the way through I'm like I'm done. And I just go walking around Santa Monica and come back like, an hour <laughs> later and meet my friend because I was with friends. Right. And they wanted to see it, and um, so, so then, like a couple of weeks or nights later, I'm at the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and two girls are kissing, just making out in the middle of it. Not in the middle of the show, but like, in the middle of the line, where we kind of wait for the show to go in, uh-huh. and just beautiful girls making out, and and I talk as is my way. I go, see that? I could watch that forever. Not you know, not yeah. like, not like. Boz Lerman's um, <laughs> just, box musical about some French fucking nightclub. La Moulin Rouge, yeah. That's not something you walk out halfway through. This is something you could watch forever. <laughs> and the girls stop kissing and they look at me and go, what's wrong with Moulin Rouge? <laughs> and I go, no, that's not what I want to happen. Keep on kissing. I don't want to talk about Moulin Rouge. I want to watch you guys kiss. And they go, what's wrong with Moulin Rouge? <laughs> like, what is it wrong with Moulin Rouge? <laughs> totally. <laughs> This, was, and I enjoyed the not enjoyed the conversation, but I enjoyed the scene I was creating. But it was very much not the outcome I had either predicted or was trying for. I used to I used to work in a movie theater. I worked at a couple movie theaters. Well, this one I, I worked in a movie theater with Usher. Sorry. And uh, sorry, my clown beard just wandering around the street. It's all right. It's fucking like. Hobo clothes. Uh, Clown feet and hobo clothes is 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 vying for title of episode eighty two. Clown feet and hobo clothes. Crime fighters. Wait, so did you draw the comic books you mentioned earlier? No, like these the, guy who, uh, the guy who came up with Hawaiian Joe, he drew. Them. But you would write them. Yes. Well, I did something similar. I was um I had um I had friends and I was like taking a short story class. Yeah. And then I ended up like like writing like in like you know. And like my friends read it and like, oh, it's pretty cool. And then I started like writing stories like involving them and us. And my other friend was like, a, a, he's he's now an inker for a comic book. Nice. But um, at the time he was just in you know, in community college, and he started drawing it. And he actually made like four comic books out of the four stories I written. Nice. I wrote. And I was like so stoked. <laughs> um, I think I have some of them in hard copy somewhere. I'll try and scan them and put them on the internet. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, this is like this is like like twenty years ago, like fifteen years ago. Yeah, there's I have one fucking one strip of Hawaiian Joe and the Walrus that I took a picture of and made my fucking whatever that banner photo is in Facebook. 
Well, but uh, yeah, it was, it was such a great feeling to see like a, a you know a visual representation of a story I wrote. I was like, ah, <laughs> um. Well, yeah, so I was a usher, and I was only usher during the week because on the weekends I was a fucking ninja turtle. Because yeah, you said that awesome was your job. job. Yeah, well, no, I, I, no, I dispute that. I dispute that was an awesome job. <laughs> like. Crazy. Okay, you mentioned getting hugged for showing up, and that was cool, but you also said, like, eight-year-olds would kick you, and it'd be, like, 115 degrees in the suit. Yeah. Well, eight-year-olds don't really have a lot of kicking power, so it's all right. <laughs> no, but who wants to be fucking kicked by an eight-year-old? Yeah. You got a fucking suit protecting you. Yeah, uh, I don't think it had that much protection. I don't know. Not from an eight-year-old. Yeah. Well, what? They're a little bitch. They're, they're, they're not going to they, they, they come in packs, dude. Yeah. Eight-year-olds do not travel alone. I was good enough that most of them didn't fucking do but, yeah, uh, but the suit was also 120 degrees. Yeah, that's so. Right. <laughs> but whatever. You gotta be a superhero. Yeah. No, you didn't get to be a superhero. You have to be a guy in a shitty costume. Yeah, Let's be clear. There was no powers granted. <laughs> you didn't save the world. It was awesome. You you maybe made someone's birthday 10 percent better. Oh, uh, I made a bunch of people's birthdays great. Not rich kids though. They don't give a shit. They're rich. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking rich. Fuck rich kids. But fuck those kids. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> so I was, uh, I know I was never at the theater on the weekend. We had a Rocky Horror. We had two Rocky Horror casts over the weekend. In Sacramento. Yeah. And uh, so I would have never really, you know, I was never there for that shit. But I was there one day, and they all knew me. I didn't really know them. It's like fucking terrible knowing faces and remembering people. And uh, so I'm sitting and I'm talking to some chick before the show, the Rocky Horror show. She's got a cloak on. It's not like fucking cloak, but just the ground. And uh, I'm talking to her. It's a fucking casual conversation. And someone walks up to her and I guess needed her fucking cloak. And uh, she gave it to her. It turns out that on Saturdays it was an all-female cast. And that chick was playing Frankenfurter. And she was in the Frankenfurter costume. And so, like, my fucking 18-year-old ass is talking to this chick. And all of a sudden, whoop. Awesome laundry. I was like, nope. <laughs> nope what? <laughs> nope, I'm gonna have to walk away now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm fucking 18 years old. I need to go fucking stand in a corner for a minute and have a cool down. <laughs> there was a... In I can't face you. This yeah. erection's gonna scare you. Yeah. Then I go, stranger danger. Yeah. When I, whatever's gonna happen in the next 30 seconds is gonna be wildly inappropriate for both of us. So I'm just gonna bounce. <laughs> All right. One of my claims to fame when I was 23 in New Jersey, there was a hot chick who played Frankenfurter. She was blonde, and I went to see the Rocky Horror Picture Show in the, in this part of Jersey where I'd never been to before. My first time there, and I picked her up. I wow. I, I hooked up with her, nice. and, and she sat down next to me at one point. And I said something. I said something about her on the stage. And she came over, and talked to me, and like, I'm gonna whisper sweet nothings in your ear, and she's okay. And I go nothing, nothing, uh, nothing. That works. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> Apparently. Man. Make that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I was surprised myself, but I was in good shape when I was 23. Well, I've I had. Never, I've never been I just got out of the Coast Guard. I've been four years there. I was like seven percent body fat. I was all. Man, my face is still my face, dude. But like my body was okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know what kind of fucking metabolism. And there was a point where I was on swim team, karate, and soccer, and I was still fucking chubby little fizzy. Like, there, life can be unfair like that. Yeah. It's like I figured at that point, I was like, well, fuck this shit. <laughs> you can't, some, some games you can't win. Yeah. Yeah, I played football. And they encouraged me to keep eating. Uh, you take yeah, up that, space You holder. don't lose weight playing football. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not. Like, we're going to put that nose tackle and you just grab a bunch of people. Yeah. I was doing three sports that were supposed to, fuck, all three sports were supposed to develop like a sexy little bucket. <laughs> like, if you ask chicks, like, what kind of fucking athlete, they like soccer players and swimmers, too. That's what they want. Yeah. And I was doing both, and I was a fucking chubby little chode, and I'm like, fuck, I can't. I can't fucking. And it's not like I played a position that didn't fuck. I already played halfback. That mother runs the entire time. Yeah. I know, yeah. And I'm just, still just my belly. <laughs> that sucks. What makes it worse is my brother. Like, you can't stable weight for that fucker. 
Well, your so metabolism getting, changes like every seven so years, saying, they said. So you had all the good metabolism in. Yeah. You're led with the... Dude, I was a test batch, dude. I was balding at 17. That guy's got a full head of long hair. So yeah. you're, you're twins, the Schwarzenegger-DeVito split. Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking skinny, like fucking... Bo like, that's not bony skinny, like embarrassing skinny. He's like that, like fucking tight skinny, like guitar. We don't want to hear about your dude's body. Anyway, basically, you got, you got the artistic talent. That's the thing is, you got the you got the saxophone and the player. Oh no, player he's a much better musician than I am too. Oh dude, that sucks. Yeah, you got nothing, man. He's basically better than me in every way. How does that feel? Is he older or younger? Younger. Oh dude. I was a test batch. I was like, I like came out and they're like, oh no, we make some adjustments. And then the second one came out like, oh no, we got it. That's the. Oh man, we're just we're just gonna let this older moron just kind of flutz around. And... You're breaking trail, man. Yeah. You made life easier for him. <laughs> you, you broke the parent chain. <laughs> My parents would try to do that thing when you're a kid. When you're, when you're, old, when you're older parent, you're like older. Uh, when you're the older sibling, your parents try to go like, "Oh, he looks up to you." And it's like, "Bullshit! He's better than me at everything." <laughs> he doesn't look up to me. I'm an embarrassment to him. And and we learn. <laughs> Wait, it, so so Zen calm except when it comes to your brother and three-year-old employers. <laughs> I'm Zen about it. He's just awesome. No, no, no we, we heard your voice, dude. <laughs> Everything else, dude. All right, so so my car blew up. All right, it happens. Cars <laughs> blow up, dude. My brother, man, my fucking brother's better than me. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I get it. My sister's younger than me, and she's way better than I am. <laughs> Oh, you see, my sister's a cunt. <laughs> the dude owns his own business now. He fucking uh, he plays like the largest outdoor stage in the world at Sturgis every year. And <laughs> toured Russia. I say it's something he's doing all right. Yeah. Oh, he's also, also decent human being. Completely <laughs> decent human being, easy to get along with, no reason to hate him in the world, so. Fuck siblings. <laughs> I'm okay with my sister being a useless cunt, dude. I'm right there. It's it's fine. Well, my sister makes good money. She gave my parents two grandchildren. Uh, she lives right nearby. <laughs> Everything I am not. And she's yeah. dependable. I can, I can Building tell. for the future. This is how my parents assess me. I have never been pressured to give them grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love your story about, like, you did the IQ test. Oh, yeah. And they never told you to score, but they took you out of private school. Yeah. And said, we Talk encourage you to get you some saxophone <laughs> lessons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm a high-functioning moron. Well, but you're well-read. I'm not even that. Well, you've got a diverse set of education <laughs> ideas and references. I just hang out with smart people and then repeat the shit they say. It's working out for you. Yeah. Don't fuck with it. Hanging out with smart people and repeating what they say is also a contender for Tyler the Podcast. <laughs> Wait, what was the other one, though? What was the, what was the better one? Oh, oh, yeah. Hobo clothes and clown feet. <laughs> <laughs> this week, this, this fall on TNT. <laughs> hobo clothes. Hobo and shoes and cur clown shoes and hobo feet. Well, See, man, I'm even wearing regular shoes today. No, but you've got fucking giant feet. I do. Which is kind of ironic, because the wall should have just huge fucking flippers. Yeah, no, I'm fucking average man. <laughs> average man. Five foot ten, overweight, white. Average man. <laughs> fucking size ten and a half shoes, which I think is the most common. Yeah, size fifteen. This is my dad. My dad was size fourteen shoes. I thought like I was set, dude. My dad is six four. I was like, I am set. I'm going to be at least six feet tall. I did not take into account my five foot two mom. <laughs> you were so close. That basketball clear just, just barely eluded you. <laughs> the only consolation I get from that is when I had that sports car. Like, my dad couldn't fit in it. I'm like, <laughs> I get to drive my sports car. <laughs> Just a blade against my chest. I don't know what's happening. What's that? We just got snow plowed. Oh. <laughs> she was just coming through. Yeah. She just pushed you as far apart. She's a place to be, man. <laughs> she got no time. No time for hobo clothes and clown feet. Out of my way. <laughs> I may never refer to the two of you as anything else ever again. <laughs> 
Sexy legs. HB and CF. No, HC. HC and CF. Alright, I'll work on that. <laughs> Apparently, you can't get the title done. Keep, keep workshopping it. <laughs> the, fact I, the fact that it took me five tries and I still didn't successfully say fucking clown shoes and hobo clothes, that's why I don't do what you guys do. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll get you up, man. You'll be fine. We'll put you up on flappers. That would be a disaster. Well, I'll produce a show next year, put you up, be like. It's not gonna be a disaster. You're not gonna, as long as you're not GT and screaming at the fucking crowd, crowd and yelling obscenities like a fucking moron. Or your fucking Elvis. Doing a random. Elvis, Elvis was often very good. He just didn't need to do that at that specific show at that specific time. But I never booked him again. Oh, dude. <laughs> Earned my money as an MC that night. Well, he was awful both those times, too. Elvis started fucking with me, and that's why I started like, So, I have this theory. No one talks to me except for you <laughs> at that show. So, I have this theory that everyone there has a bet going on whether I'm high or special needs. <laughs> and they're like, not. Nah, they're sort of afraid to figure it out. And the answer is high. I'm usually fucking, I eat, I eat an edible before I go down there and fucking high as shit. Well, everybody's on drugs there. That's not a fucking... That's not new. Yeah, that's what I figured. Like, but... Uh, but <laughs> and so I think, like, fucking Elvis was deciding he was going to do that. But then he started kind of fucking with me. I'm like, dude... You're a comic. I know that you didn't... Like, you can't try to pass yourself off as the food thing. You're a fucking comic. <laughs> and he stole my fucking Spider-Man ring. And that was it. What?! <laughs> How? Why? My birthday is around um, Comic Con. No, no, I get why you have a Spider Man ring. That's yeah. not the how. The, the, the how is like, what do you fucking do? Just pull up your finger? Or he's like, can I see that? And just fucking. Yeah, like, it's one of those, can I see that? And then just fuck up, fucks off and then never saw him again. It's like, dude, you fucking stole a cupcake ring. Wow. You petty little weirdo. <laughs> fuck off, dude. Alright, I got a good story. High All right. school. Alright, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking long distance runner at this point. So this is like 17, like, Towards the end of my senior year, and um, but like a cross country runner, so I'm about like five eight, about like 110 pounds. Right. All right. And there's some dude, fucking, you know, one of the, you know, bigger than me by about half of three, three quarters of a foot, and he's like, I see that my sunglasses, got some fucking ugly ass sunglasses, takes it and just starts fucking running off, and I chase him, and he gets in a fucking, and eventually I, see, yeah, I'm like, but like he gets, he has a car, but I know that it's a fucking just stop sign where it's like. 30 cars deep right. so I run to the stop sign I wait for his car and like he said Starsky Hutch I leap on the hood of his car <laughs> oh, and I'm like shit. give me back my sunglasses <laughs> that's a that's a weird bully that's done a lot like someone like oh borrow some shit from me and then fuck off and I was like you have really vastly overestimated how important that thing is to me that you just took it's not the important one. That's a Zen thing. For me, it was the taking. You will not take from me, and I'm not going to just meekly allow it. So when you jumped on his foot, what happened then? Uh, as I recall, he gave it back to me. It was broken, and I told the fucking school official, and he had to pay me 20 bucks the next, <laughs> next school day. But I am sure that in the range of outcomes that he thought would happen, me fucking leaping onto the hood of his car... Not was never factored in. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying I didn't get beat up in high school, right? I, I talk about, you know, I did get my, you know, eventually get my blue belt jiu-jitsu. Definitely had one in tw had 13 cage fights in front of a crowd. And I had a bunch of fights in the Coast Guard. But I am not one saying that I'm fucking, you know, I never got my ass kicked. And I didn't get my ass kicked in high school. But I didn't back down. <laughs> and if you took something from me... I was not afraid to play action hero and jump on your fucking car. That was one thing is I, I got picked on a lot, but I never got my ass kicked. But I also never got, I never was in a fight. I never got my ass kicked because it never got to that point. Well, it often got to that point with me. I but, think it's uh, early on I figured out that like it, that whole thing took my participation. And if I just didn't do it, like, as much as the guy like, you know, coax and coax and coax, if I just went like, 
Why? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what are you looking for? Sometimes man? lots of people got hit without without participating. <laughs> <laughs> I never did. I'm saying like by seeing people like it was not. Oh, you could you could avoid a lot of things by not not engaging, but you could also get the shit kicked out of you while not engaging. Oh good. Yeah. There's one dude just hit me to see what I would do, but I did the same thing. I was like, "What are you looking for, man? What are you, what are you, what are you hoping for? What's the outcome you're looking at? What's uh?" <laughs> That's very sad. If somebody hit me, I think I'd kill him. <laughs> Try. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, that's what he wanted. He wanted me because he was gonna kick my ass. He's an athlete. He's fast and shit. Sure. That's what he wanted. And then, like, when the guy just turns around, is like, "All right, what? Why? What's what are you?" What are you hoping for? And he just gets embarrassed at that point. And I'm like, I win. Because <laughs> like, like, everyone's looking at him like, yeah, well, what are you looking for? You... Everyone knows you can kick his ass. Why'd you do it? I don't because I'm, I'm fairly convinced I kill somebody. Uh, I'll grab an item. I don't care. I don't, I'm not fighting fair. If you serve shit with me, I'm going to do whatever I have to to win. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I guess it's like, I mean, these are all fucking like... So I don't because I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Well, we were I, all suburban, like middle school. Like it's not. I was never in danger. It was always just some bullshit kid. But I'm just saying with you, like I've never really been in a real fight. Like I sparred about ten years ago. I was sparring and boxing and stuff. But I mean, that's that's two people expecting to hit each other. Did I, did I, I've never I, been in a fight. Fight. Have I told you the the, the karate tournament story on the podcast? No, we'll we'll, we'll get to that next time because we're we're at the <laughs> end of episode eighty two of. Um, hobo clothes and clown feet. <laughs>